Hello, everyone, and welcome to Aura and the Empty Universe, a game in which we play as the last person on Earth, desperately looking for others. Now, this is a game I've been kind of curious about for a while now, because a lot of the reviews say that for the subject matter, I might be kind of surprised with the tone that it takes about its story. Now, why are we the last person on Earth? What happened to everyone else? Why were we in particular left behind? Well, I guess we'll just have to play to find out. Now, our options here are look or keep looking. That's kind of ominous, and keep looking is grayed out, which I suppose makes sense. How can we keep looking if we haven't even looked yet? But I do enjoy when menu screens have options that like, sort of help lean into the theme a little bit. Well, I guess we can't see until we look. Uh, ooh, it actually tells us how to play. This sort of reminds me, uh, visually of, like, old Flash games. Z is our interact key, X is cancel, and we move with the arrow keys. I wonder if WASD will still work. There's more. Of course there's more. I didn't even do anything and I'm still here. There's others out there. More people just as confused as I am. Just have to find them. All there is to it. Huh. Gas is kind of low. And here we are. Oh, visually, it actually kind of reminds me of, uh, I don't even know what the system would be called. Years ago, there was a game for Gremlins 2. Nobody's going to know what I'm talking about, where you're, like, walking around in an office and picking stuff up. I don't even know what era of games this would be called or what the systems would be, but it's definitely a visual style that I've seen before and not at all what I expected. All right, so we are running low on gas. There's a map of the country in the back seat. There are a lot of red X's scribbled on it. Hmm, interesting how it decided not to identify our character in the opening dialogue. But let's have a look. Something's got to be down this way, right? Oh, they're having a sale on gas. Five-finger discount. Sale for... Oh, wow, you're just going to put that there for everyone to see, huh? Oh, that's really cute uh, drawing style. The door is locked. Ugh. Maybe I can find a big stick around here. Not like there's anyone left to tell me no. Now, I get the impression that that opening dialogue is actually saying a lot more than it seemed like. First of all, it's a very interesting choice to title the game Aura and the Empty Universe, but not actually identify the main character that we're playing as, at least thus far which may be some kind of misdirection as to who we're actually playing as. But also the tone of that actual narration. It sort of seems like there's kind of a hopeful or, well, maybe in denial side to this. That they've been at this for a long time and haven't actually accepted the case. Well, let's see if we can't find a big stick. That looks like a big stick. Pick up the branch. All right, that glass's days are numbered. All right, got to be careful not to jam a splinter under my skin when I swing this. Kablam. Okay, that's a lot harder than I was expecting. Yep, just got to go for it. There you go. You toss the branch aside. Oh, come on, you don't even want to draw a face on it, keep it on the passenger seat? Bonus, no alarm. Okay, so I guess maybe the power is still on. The workshop page says that it's been several months. I mean, not workshop, the, st the store page. Wasn't going to be here for long, but still, would have been annoying. Enter the gas station? <laughs> yup, or not yet. This game has a sort of laid-back feel to the dialogue and text. But it almost feels like it's more to comfort myself than anything. 
What? You hear a voice from the dark. Hello? Hello? I heard the door break. Is there someone here? Please, if someone is there, I need help. I can't move. Uh, okay, uh, what do we do? What do we do? Do we just feel our way around? Is there something we can do? Oh, I can't see it. Some kind of crystal shard. Hello? Yes, hello, hello down here. Uh, hi. Talking crystal. Hello, please pardon my appearance. This is not normal for me, either. I would imagine so. My name is Keskin. Could I have yours? Ara. Ara. So good to meet you. Yeah, good to, uh, meet you too? Oh. Uh, would you mind picking me up and taking me with you? I can't move right now, being a crystal. Wherever you're headed is fine, but... Please, don't leave me here. How did something like you come to exist in this gas station? Uh, sure. You pick up the talking crystal that calls itself Keskin. You're probably not crazy. I must say, I am surprised. After the Dark One was actually able to follow through on his threat, I thought for sure I was the last living elf on Saroth. Well, this having gas stations and cars, I would assume this is Earth. Wait, you dumped a lot on me just now. Wow, way to mirror my sentiments exactly. What? Uh... Forgive me, what was confusing? <laughs> like, all of that. What's Sara? The planet we're standing on? He sounds confused. Wait, where do you think this is? Well, I don't know. I was hoping to ask you. By your appearance, I would think this is Toraz. Wait... I think I get what's happening. Or I've finally gone insane, and this is what it feels like to think you're talking to aliens. Keskin, this planet is called Earth. My apologies, this humor is foreign to me. Where are we? Torres? Deltas? The United Republic? Never heard of any of those places. I'm sorry. Also, don't think I don't notice what appears to be a huge rift in reality just above us in the back of the store. What's the dominant species? Elves. You're an elf, yes? I mean... I suppose I'm sort of dressed as one. Humans. What's a hu- Oh my goodness, this is a different planet. With intelligent life? How did- I, I didn't- Pardon me. I'm processing all this, <laughs> and apparently I'm having a much easier time than you are. No worries. Feeling a bit lightheaded myself. I love this character already. Where are we going? I've been driving for seven hours, and I just got a lot of stuff dumped on me in under a minute that I'm still not sure is real. I'm gonna take a nap in my car. Who knows? Maybe I'll wake up and you'll actually just be a rock. Cause I've actually gone off the deep end. Uh, maybe after all this time, you're no stranger to events like this. All taking place in your head, of course. I'm sorry, the streets outside are so loud tonight. Um, no offense, Mr. Keskin, I just, I need to lie down. Well, we could do that, or we could enter the giant crystal cave that appeared in the back of this convenience store. Is it really dark in here, or is this just acting as a portal to whatever world you come from? Oh, we can walk through it, but it's like some kind of archway, not a cave at all. Well, I suppose we should get out of here. Are you sure we can't pick this up again? 
stick. All right, well, I think I'm going to explore the grounds just a little bit more, but I kind of don't know if we'll be able to find anything else. You know, it's only now that it's really dawning on me. Everything has taken place so far with no music. Which I often find distracting in a Let's Play, like, when I can only hear my own words. It's like I loop in on myself, and it's like I have a hard time commentating. But I suppose it's actually very fitting, giving the themes of this game. Take a nap. I think I will. You climb into your car, recline your seat, and leave your problems to the you that'll wake up a few hours from now. I am so gonna use that. You get up, stretch your everything, and accept that the crystal can indeed talk. Yeah, I imagine this is one of those things where you'd wake up, remember that, and be like, did that really happen? So, you, uh, mentioned something about a dark one? You talk for a bit. So, this dark one is the guy who screwed us? <laughs> I love how you take all of this in and immediately just go straight to being mildly annoyed. Yes, an extinction spell. I'm so sorry. I didn't even know there was life aside from my own species, or that the Dark One could reach so far. No, no, you've got nothing to be sorry for. It's this Dark Guy's fault. Keskin, is there a way to get to your world? Uh, the building you recovered me from. The archway inside is a teleporter. Entering it would take you to my world. Well, it didn't work yesterday. Right. Want to go dark one hunting? I love that devious little grin. Keskin trips over his words a few times before stammering out, Excuse me? I said, do you want to put a bullet between this dark person's eyes? I, I heard you, just... Would it not be more prudent to lay low? I don't think so. If our Dark One ever looks out over what he thinks is an empty universe and somehow notices he missed a few, he wants to say he couldn't do his thing again and finish the rest of us off. I suppose that's a good point. Don't be too worried. I don't plan on running up and waving my gun at him. I don't know anything about you or your world. I just want to make this huge commitment of taking down the most powerful being in the universe based on words alone. But, I know anyone touting the name Dark One probably needs some planning to kill. Well, I'm glad to hear that at least. Good to hear you're somewhat on board. Let's go. Do I need to retrieve a gun? Why would anyone want stick when auto exists? Yeah, everyone has their own idea of fun, but come on. Well, I suppose we have a look. I mean, here's a stick I want. Why are you not taking this with you? This was supposed to be a gas station. Well, let's try stepping through again. You'll feel a pull. Just relax. Ah, before I forget, people's first warp can be nauseating. You'll want to brace yourself. Ugh, okay. You feel a light force pulling you. What happens if I pull away? <laughs> exactly that. Well, let's do it. Hmm. Now that's interesting. This is a lot more Aperture Science than the alien fantasy world I was expecting. I'm actually not sure. Does this character come from another planet or another universe entirely? <laughs> okay, I guess there's that nausea hitting us. That seems more than a little bit mild. Think about kittens. Soft, fluffy, white, fuzzy, bleh. Ugh. <laughs> Oh dear. Head to the door on your left, make another left, and you'll be at the bathroom. 
You nod quickly. Uh, but surely I can have a look around first. There's some water right here. Is it okay to drink old water? I mean, water from any large body of the stuff must be ancient, right? Mmm. I mean, yeah, I don't think water really goes bad. You open the locker. There's an old coat and a family photo. Their ears are unusually long and pointed. Elves. Locked. You jiggle and tug the handle, but it doesn't open. You were expecting the locker to be locked, so you pull hard and it swings out fast. It didn't even feel like there was a lock. Ah oh, yes, like when I go to pick up a cup and realize there's no water in it. Guess the lock's busted. Locked. The trigger for the handle doesn't even budge. And locked. Whatever is in there most certainly is not square-shaped. Why did I just... You know, it's in there. I'm out here. Let's just leave it at that. I don't know what that means. That's weird. They're really blending, like, science with fantasy here. Anything useful in the file cabinet? The filing cabinet is mostly empty. And you run your fingers along the thin plastic leaves. You feel cold. The real one would have been dead by now. Yeah, I suppose both worlds were annihilated. Alright, through here and on the left, you said? That's a closet. The shelf has cleaning supplies on it. Ew. Why isn't this in a bucket? I love how these are all your reactions to heading to a completely new world that you only just found out existed. Although I suppose it's not so unlike ours as to be unfamiliar. A mostly red cardboard box. Water first, clean up later. Okay, I, I really should have probably followed the instructions first, because I don't remember what they were. Wow, this place is huge. This leads us back into here. So it's huge, but not necessarily complicated. Maybe up here and on the left? Come on. Yep. Here we go. Flush the toilet, wipe the seat, wash your hands. And apparently that was asking too much for some people. You gargle and spit for a good couple minutes. Ugh. Hey, you got a janitor's closet around here? Want to clean that mess up before we get underway with looking for this dark one? I'm pretty sure we do. I don't know where it is, though. Never had to go there myself. I'll find it. I already did find it. And what is with these red cardboard boxes? A cardboard box of garbage bags. Probably. I mean, it looks like it would have garbage bags in it. I love this, like, lazy narrator who says that they searched something but didn't actually. Not the first time it's happened. Here we go. You grab some paper towels off the shelf. Perhaps the mop as well? No? Used wipes to clean up the mess. Oh boy. This looks like it's mostly stomach acid. You toss the dirty paper towel in the closest bin. Right then. So about finding this dark one. Yeah, this facility can help us do that. This teleporter doesn't come and go to only two places. We can calibrate it to take us to any coordinates we set. I'd like to run a diagnostic on all the facility's systems before we begin, though. The computer over there, if you would. I'll walk you through it. Right there. Click that, and it'll take care of itself. Running full diagnostics. This may take a few minutes. So, about this dark one. Got any ideas on how to fight him? Well, the company I work for was partnered with a weapons manufacturer. Long story short, we were working on a beefed-up magic jammer. Good idea. A tool that blocks magic would definitely be helpful against someone calling himself the Dark One. Oh, you know what it is. Were the people of your world attuned to magic as well? No, it's just, uh, it's in the name, you know? Oh, I suppose you are correct. 
And I'm thinking we also add Big Gun to the shopping list. I know the location of a military base. We can head there once we've acquired the jammers. Should certainly be able to find some firepower there. So how come none of you were able to do anything about this? Okay, so magic jammers, big gun... What else would help us against someone like this? Hmm... System diagnostics complete. All systems are working fine. I'll let you know if I think of anything. Alright. Anything else we need to attend to before we get started on our shopping list? No. We can head out whenever you're ready. I'll show you how to operate the teleporter console. It's very simple. I think I have a little bit more exploring to do before we do this. But I have to say, I'm someone who tends to get annoyed by, like, quirky, hashtag relatable characters, but this one, I think, is written really well. Because they're written in a way that sounds like an actual person and not like they're trying to be quirky. And of course, she's made even more likable by the fact that she is a go-getter if I ever met one. Literally wanders the Earth alone for several months, encounters a talking crystal from an alien or maybe mythological race she didn't even know existed, and within minutes is basically ready to go kill a god. That is taking matters into your own hands. Uh, the door handle doesn't budge in the slightest. Stubborn thing. Did someone dump concrete on the other side of this door? Certainly feels like it. What about the other one? Ah, oh, we can explore these offices. Uh, which is once again reminding me of Gremlins 2. A box of six-gallon garbage bags. This upsets you a little. <laughs> what? Ooh, look at me! Too fancy to use grocery store plastic bags for my trash cans. <laughs> uh, the things you choose to- wait. Looks like that cabinet is open. Out of curiosity, you slide open some drawers. Slow inhale. You pick up a peculiar plushie. Mostly empty drawers. What kind of plushie are we I want to see it. I want to see the peculiar plushie. But I guess that was a gasp of cuteness, that it was something you had to have. Mostly empty drawers, except why is there a blanket and pillow in here? Did a tiny person sleep in here? Wait. No, just some files and documents. Oh, you stupid flavor text getting me half my hypes up. Uh, I'm not even commentating anymore. Water. <laughs> uh, I guess you really could have used it after your incident a moment ago. So, elves. You are expecting something different. Wow, maybe R can be my other co-commentator, uh, along with Alan Wake, because that's actually really... that's pretty much right on the nose. Should be one more door left to check, right after we check these lockers. It's quiet. What a strange response to examining a locker. Hmm. Looks like some kind of containers? Machinery? What's this thing? I think it's a coolant machine. What about you? Uh, anything I need to know about this? Karis battery. Long story short, lots of energy. This one can keep a city powered for five years. Woof. So we can crash here for a while, right? Yeah, the AC won't be going down anytime soon. Well, that's good to know. There's crumbs on the keyboard. Good thing it's not your computer. Huh. No more multiplayer games. Screw it. People were jerks online anyway. Hey you! Mm. Stop stealing kills! <sighs> Grow up. Yeah, I've always been of the opinion that there is no such thing as kill stealing. Like, I didn't steal your kill, I got the kill before you did. The W key has had its spring broken and doesn't come back up. Still works, but 
and it's annoying to look at. We'll need to head to my office first. We have the specific building on file where the jammers are being developed. The coordinates for my office are... Ah, and from here, ah, this will act as like a hub. Veldos offices. Hmm. Okay, I'm good. Ah, uh, good. I was not looking forward to having to do that whole dance every single time. You're getting used to the jumps already. You didn't vomit this time. Please don't say vomit. Of course. <laughs> right then. We'll need to find the file that gives us the location of the R&D building that was working on the magic jammers. Storage and filing is in the basement. Ah, great. So we're heading down to a basement on an abandoned foreign planet. What's going on with this thing? There's like a wind. And it seems like we left a little impression on the ground right here. Which seems to be the case wherever we teleport to. Like it leaves a permanent fixture. You shake the mouse. The screen flickers on. There are a few windows to look through. Minimized internet browser. Minimized in a hurry, maybe? That seems more interesting. It's all porn. It's just porn. I can barely click on the tabs. This guy had like 50 open. I don't understand. We hadn't even installed the cubicles yet. Why was someone doing this in the open? <laughs> Alright, let's check the emails. You open an email titled Password Memo. Hey guys, storage and filing has got new passwords. Storage and filing door code 89231. Storage and filing terminal password 78203. Well, I'm going to enjoy running back here to get those. The monitor has a nasty smear across the screen. I imagine you'd see something similar if you were to turn off that one. It looks like we can actually see a night sky through this window. Oh, and we can look right out. Huh. That's actually kind of nice, although, funnily enough, not at all unlike our own world. The bin is empty, except for some old gum stuck to the bottom. Ara, are you considering it? <laughs> I kind of think you were. If you don't mind my asking, how did you survive? I thought he had killed everyone. You know, I could ask you the same question. I didn't do anything. I just went to sleep, same as always. Woke up the next morning, and it took me about three hours to realize my city was empty. Uh, kind of reminds me of Shaun of the Dead. I see. Curious. Maybe it had something to do with being asleep like the Langoliers. That has actually gotten far more mention than it has any right to on this channel. A small decorative vase is on the drawer, but I guess I can't do anything with it. Hey, so you people are magic, right? To an extent. Every elf has the potential. It varies from person to person. Wouldn't have been able to tell. This place looks a lot like my world. Very normal for me. I see. What did you think you would see? Uh... I don't really know. Uh, a wizard tower? Well, we do have a few of those. Ancient history, though. Very inefficient conductors. That's hilarious. But I guess it makes sense. I mean, you know, you think of a fantasy world as, like, being anchored to medieval times for some reason, but, I mean, I guess those worlds would have to advance at some point, too, and what do you get besides this? Kind of reminds me of that movie Bright. See what's over here first before we move on. Well, there's probably going to be where we have to... Oh, no, we don't have to enter a door code. We can actually just step right outside. Uh, but this is actually kind of intimidating and a little bit scary. Okay, so we can go down the staircase to the basement or to our left. And it's another janitor's closet. No. Mop. Bucket. Uh, this is a pet peeve of yours, is it? Uh, these must be... These must be said archives. 
All right, so we'll have to go back upstairs and grab that door code since this isn't going to open for us. Eight, nine, two, three, one. There we are. But the terminal requires a password as well. So we'll have to go back up and get that. Basement filing cabinet. Very different from a standard filing cabinet. But only one actually gets that description, which is kind of funny. Okay, that stuff is quite conspicuous. Wait, is that...? You reach into a box on the shelf and gently pick up a doll. Whoever owned this would have wanted someone, me, to have it. Oh, I'm just picking up all kinds of dolls and plushies. You picked up a peculiar doll. The file I'm looking for probably won't stick out as obviously. All right, 78203. There we are. File search. Bosmec Jammer Project, definitely. Doll for Harith. Okay, this is actually kind of personally important now. Column 2, row 3. Hey, Harith. Finish that doll you commissioned. I'm gonna leave it here for you to find. Well... Since I guess it's not too personal of an object, it's fine if I keep it. Design approvals. Not what I'm looking for. Oh, come on, you're not even a little bit curious? Employee evaluation forms. Oh boy, always fun getting this from your boss. You need to work on your communication with management, Ara. You can't just cuss your boss out, Ara. It's impolite. Ara, you never volunteer for overtime. Be a team player. I swear, anyone that forces crunch time on their employees should be shot. Isn't that a bit... Buy a firing squad! <laughs> Oh, I love how unapologetic this all is. Okay, uh, Bosmic Jammer Project. Related files can be found in column 4, row 5. Better check every part of the shelves. I've done plenty of searching on my own. Column 4, row 5. Here we are. The file for the Jammer Project. You grab the file for the Magic Jammer Project. Wait. Oh my goodness. What is something like this doing here? What? Ara, the red box. It's a bit farther back. Would you grab it? You reach to the back and run your hands along a smooth metallic box. Ooh. That looks like it maybe should have stood out on the shelf. Excellent. It still has power. Well, if you apparently have batteries that can store energy for a city for five years... It only makes sense that everything else would last forever. What do we got here? A forge box. Place me inside of it and my material will be fashioned into something more portable. Sounds good to me, but this won't hurt you, will it? Or have some kind of weird cost? Yeah, see, you're using your noodle. I like that. No. It will only cost the energy stored in the box. This is more so an engineered tool than magic. No tricks here. Well, all right. Full steam ahead. You place Keskin into the box and follow his instructions. This will only take a moment. Huh. Warm. Is something unexpected happening? Right. I think I'm done in here. You open the box and pick up Keskin. Ooh... Okay! Oh man, Keskin got hands! Oh, I did not think I would come out looking like this. <laughs> you look good to me. Very good, then. We have the coordinates for the office that was working on the jammers. Shall we? Although the glow of the forge box's gem is dyed, you take it with you. <laughs> I suppose it... Shaped you into the shape of the thing I thought I needed most? Let's head outside and have a look around the facility. Uh, there's actually a lot of ground to explore. Uh, can we cross this street up here? 
Oh, we can't. Man, how much space is there going to be? Alright, it's actually not as huge as I thought. There's another building right here. You look down at a newspaper on the ground. The words are too faded to read. Every photo with people in it shows them having long, pointed ears. Hmm. 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 A deserted convenience store with a hole blown in the back. Not super unlike what I would imagine the one we tried to enter at the beginning would look like. Alright, well, of course, we have to examine each of these shelves. Now about the register. You tug on and try to jiggle the cash register drawer. Ah, forget it. The risk of setting off a loud and annoying alarm isn't worth it. That's hilarious. Because you can tell that this is something she has dealt with many times in the past, scouring the empty earth, and is something that she just hates so much. Like, I can imagine her raging after the tenth time it happened, and actually tempering her searching because of it. Always made you cough if you were even close to them. Then you'd get dirty looks for coughing. Yep. Pardon my rudeness, let me just stop my body from performing its natural functions that keep me healthy. Now, let's have a look at what happened here. Why is this broken? I don't know, maybe it has something to do with the gaping hole in the back of the store? You run your fingers along the damaged wall. Hey, uh, Keskin. Do you have any animals here strong enough to blast holes in walls like this? No, we do not. Um... Yeah, these are claw and scratch marks. You want to get out of here? I would love to get out of here. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, I was a little bit nervous stepping out onto the dark night, but... I think I'm going to be even more nervous from now on. Uh, nothing but the sound of the wind in our ears. It's the absolute silence, the lack of any other sign that makes this worse. Alright, there's horrifying monstrosities out here unknown to even elf kind, so I think it's time we skedaddle. Let's go. Ah, I guess we've fully gotten used to it. According to the file, the facility working on the jammers should be at these coordinates. Bosmec R&D facility. Uh, who knows what kind of goodies we can find there. Keskin... We in the right place? Oh dear. I might have had you set the coordinates to a hotel we use for employees traveling in the area. I could use a hotel shower right about now. I mean, you say this thing is still powered, right? The facility is close by, though. Out the front door to your right and just follow the road. Alright. Well, that's very convenient. You look at the crystals jutting from the ground. Ah, this one's in a bucket. <laughs> you grab the mop handle. You're pleased that this one is in a bucket. Hmm, what is this? I feel like we shouldn't be messing with this stuff, but also it's a point-and-click game, so I have to click on everything. Some kind of circuit breaker box. What's this valve even do? Ah, it seems like this place kind of had their stuff together more. All these mops are in buckets. Now what is this down here? Some kind of pump? You can see some moisture along the sides of the water pump's transparent intake tube. Still carrying out your duty. Thank you. <laughs> this is the kind of commentary I feel like is fun to read and fun to listen to, but is also very indicative of someone who needed the commentary in order to get through their days. You could say that one of these boxes is tiny. What a weird bit of commentary. Alright, let's not head down the street yet. I want to see what more is here. A whole lot of rooms, it seems. Alright, let's take this in an organized fashion. Start with the bottom, then the top, moving our way down the hallway to the right. Locked. Locked. 
This one's open. You pick up the phone and hold it to your ear. There's no sound. Cozy, but not now. You really wanted a nightstand back at your old home. The curtains are closed, and we are not going to do anything about that? You don't want to open them. Why not? Are you afraid you'll see whatever's crawling around out there tearing holes in buildings? Rotten, moldy chicken, moldy cheese, and a Tupperware containing... Ugh. You close the mini-fridge. I love how it's like she couldn't even get through the commentary and instead just had to quickly get out of there. There's a cup and a spoon in the sink. I've already got a knife. <laughs> you can come in here as well. Uh, I see that it's lapped up over the pillow, but for a second I thought we might actually find something beneath the sheets. There's some sealant tape sticking out from where the faucet gets... Wait, where the faucet tape gets screwed to the spout. Uh, just ignore it. Really? Discolored eggs, an empty milk jug, and a cake that's hard as a brick. That looks like the bottom drawer is open. You slide open the drawer and find a dark garb. No money, medicine, or sweets in this drawer. It's of no use. Hello. That's kind of creepy looking. <laughs> Can we add it to our ever-increasing collection of stuffed animals and plushies? Hello. <laughs> it looks like you're thinking of doing that. You found a peculiar plushie. A moldy tomato, moldy bagel, and expired milk. Alright, I guess that's probably it for the hotel, unless we can open this curtain? Nah. Okay, let's get out of here. I'm actually kind of nervous about stepping out into the night now. Okay, there's a building across the street. What is that? Can we interact with that? It doesn't seem so. I've been meaning to ask you, how did you survive? I remember you asked me the same thing, and seemed surprised when I told you I did nothing. So what did you do? Ah, well... We all felt it about a minute or two before it happened. I still remember the looks on my co-workers' faces. In that brief moment before we were wiped out, I set the teleporter to send me anywhere, and turn myself into a crystal as I jumped into it. Huh. Your Crystal Keskin? It was a rush decision made under a lot of assumptions, but it seems to have kept me alive. Assumptions? Assumptions about how the extinction spell worked. Or if it was a spell at all. I had assumed that whatever it was needed to connect to living, organic material that generally resembled elven anatomy. So in the moment, I tried to not fit those assumed parameters. Turned myself into a crystal while jumping into a teleporter to reduce my presence for good measure. Either it worked, or I got lucky like you and this was entirely unnecessary. I just hope this wasn't a stupid mistake. It wasn't stupid. You had no way of knowing whether or not what happened could miss or fail its function to kill. So you made a quick decision to maximize your chance of survival, knowing it would cost you. That took a lot of guts. Thank you, Ara. If I still had a mouth, I would be smiling right now. Okay, I hadn't thought about that, but now that you've drawn attention to it, how are you talking to me? Sorry if my voice sounds a little bit hoarse, by the way. I've been recording for hours today. I'm trying to get all of next week's stuff done, basically today. This door does not open automatically. You try to pull it open, but it seems to be stuck. Uh, where's a big branch when you need one? Locked. A flyer. But we can't interact. You peer through the glass, but the inside is too dark to make anything out. 
continue our journey then. Maybe I shouldn't be wandering too far off the trail? What is this? Here we are. And a reception desk with no one to greet us. You scan the reception desk. Eh, nothing good here. Dead. <laughs> okay, so I guess we found the one real plant in this entire place. Goes to show how much of a tight ship this place was. That scared the absolute bejesus out of me for a moment. Hang on, let me just explain to you what happened to me. So we entered from the bottom of the sc or well, I guess the top. Point is, I saw this silhouette as me at first, and my eyes went to the top left of the screen, and so I thought I walked into a room and saw myself standing on the far side. Okay. Well, let's uh, have more of a look around then. Uh, looks like an elevator right here. You try to call the lift, but nothing happens. Elevator's out. What about this door over here? Probably some useful info on that bulletin board. A paper with some meeting times and room numbers on it. But I guess they don't matter to me. What goes on a corkboard? Corkboard stuff. Why do I feel like that's the note that gets sent to every model maker for every game that has corkboards? There's always jokes on them. There's a thin yet solid layer of dust on the monitor. It's a little frustrating. <laughs> Don't I know it. You gently kick the box and feel some resistance. You open the box and search the contents. What is it? You take the contents of the box with you, but you're not going to share what they were. I'm just going to assume it was another doll then. Yeah, on the recording, it just looks like a little black and yellow ball of some kind. More to the point, what is all of this? A tool desk with drawers for screws and other small parts. Now what's over here? Ah, good. This is what we're here for. This jammer is incomplete, though. Ah, will we have to assemble it ourselves? You know how to assemble these? You can walk me through it. Unfortunately, I don't. It wasn't my field. I see. Well, let's keep poking around. Maybe we'll find some completed ones. Or maybe even the means to assemble it ourselves? A large, white, locked cabinet. You're not sure what's kept in here. Okay, so maybe we should be on the lookout for some kind of key as well. You're not sure there's much difference between a dustbin and a trash bin. I love how, like... Every once in a while, the generic objects will offer some kind of flavor text to set them apart. It's weird. We have, like, boss garbage cans in this game. Oh, boy. You never got yourself a trash bin for your room. Just hung plastic bags off doorknobs. You know, I'm starting to paint a picture of your living space as a very barren space. No end table, no garbage cans, and no elevators. Although that's a little bit more understanding. <laughs> Nothing on this part of the corkboard. Company picnic? Oh, please. I think people would rather you didn't. Like, if I got the day off, then let me spend it at home. Don't make me come into work. Well, I rather enjoyed my company's tea parties. If you say so. Give me pizza, soda, video games, day off, and I'm happy. Unions don't help you. We watch out for one another. As a family. Uh, I guess things are really the same here. That's pretty bad. Quite. <laughs> well, at least we're on the same page as far as that goes. See, that's something you have to consider here. When there's nobody else on Earth to talk to, it makes it really difficult to flush your knife down the toilet when it starts talking about how unions are communism. 
Which might be a thought that no one's ever had to compile before. You open the box and just some files inside. All right, let's start the painstaking process of clicking on everything. Ah, uh, gross. There's a bug on the keyboard. Okay, well, I guess the snap didn't take everything. Which, you know, I hadn't considered this, but there's a non-zero possibility we're heading into a confrontation with Thanos. Okay, that's the end of the hallway, which means this is the end of the... Excuse me? What is that thing? I'm afraid to click forward. What are you doing? Keskin? I am also very lost. I have no idea what this is. There is something so much more terrifying about you not knowing what this is. And I am certain that Veldos and our partners never worked with any kind of... whatever this is. Oh, it looks like a bull squid from Half-Life 1. I see. You lean slightly closer and take a few quick sniffs before pulling away. Your time alone has really not done wonders for your self-preservation instincts. Weird. It doesn't smell like anything. Interesting, but I would advise against getting too close to it. Yeah, you're probably right. Is it moving at all? I don't think so. Okay, well, it looks like there's some stuff on the table. The suitcase is full of jammers. Hey, we found the jammers, man! Keskin? It's getting up, isn't it? Oh, yes. Let's collect them and be on our way. You okay? Yes, yes, just fine. I was lost in my thoughts for a moment. Alright, let's get out of here. You bring the suitcase with you. You try to pull the cabinet door open, but it's locked. I guess they keep parts in here? Some electronics? Uh, uh, my urge is to get away from this thing. It's probably what tore that massive hole. But also, I gotta click all the things. There might be funny flavor text. An incomplete jammer and what appears to be a soldering tool. Maybe it would be good to take that? What if I keep poking the thing? <laughs> she just kind of squints at it inquisitively. Well, let's keep going. I noticed there were more stairs, so we'll have to check those out. So many hallways, so many doors. Ah, the boardroom brought before the big boss, eh? Come on, you have to want to sit in this. Yeah, there's way too much text on this flyer. A drawing of a dingus is tacked onto the corkboard. One of the little red drawers is slightly open. You gently close it and give it a pat. <laughs> that look of satisfaction. <laughs> well, let's get going. Right. So that's the jammers off the checklist. Now we need a gun. Uh-oh, I think that thing might have woken up. Your voice trick your voice quickly trails off to silence. Oh my god, what is that? I can't tell if it's floating or if it's supposed to be huge or both. But that doesn't look like the thing we saw inside. You draw air into your lungs as quietly as you can and run. Oh no, go 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 go. Oh god, I didn't actually expect there to be any running to be done. Okay, go this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. Keep going. Oh my god, that thing is so fast. Keep going, keep going, keep going. We lost it, but I hope it's not tempting me to stop because that's not happening. Okay, through here, through here, through here, through here. Back to the teleporter hub. Please tell me that thing can't follow us. It can't follow us, can it? No. The teleporter cuts the connection once we make the return trip. There's also an ocean separating this building from that location. That's good to know, so that'll buy us some time, considering it floats. Okay. <laughs> you don't seem entirely convinced. You collapse to the ground and push yourself into a corner. Ara, are you alright? Are you hurt? 
There's a first aid box in the bathroom. I'm fine. I just need a sec. Uh, all right, I understand. A couple minutes pass. Whew. Okay. Okay. You stand on shaky legs. Ara, we can wait. I don't think you should push yourself. No. I'm fine. If I sit down, I'll start to dwell on it. Let's have those coordinates to that military base you were talking about. We still need a better gun than what I've got. Uh, well, you still have yet to actually pull it out. I'm thinking maybe we could have used it a couple times. Do you maybe like some water? Uh, nope, still worried about old water. Well, let's see what we can do. Are you sure you don't want to rest a bit longer? I'm fine. Thank you, Keskin. I don't even know what would happen if we tried to go back. But I think the best use of our time will be to head to the outpost. Of course we're outside. And outside where all kinds of creatures are hanging about. And I see there's more what appears to be scratch marks on the ground. The door to this one is locked. Oh, different, uh, different... Barracks. There's all kinds of creatures inhabiting this world now. Again with this? You sure this isn't something that occurs naturally here? I'm certain. Mm -hmm. Wait, please don't try to smell it again. Yeah, yeah. Alright. That looks like something we can use. That looks like something it's about to tutorialize us on. You grab the gun. That devilish smirk. You feel around for the magazine release, the trigger, and safety. Everything feels like it's where it should be. Uh, do be careful with that. Of course. Hmm. It knows things. <laughs> what do you mean, it knows things? Maybe you want to test that gun out, or... Maybe this thing was a victim of it at some point in the recent past. So, that's the jammers and the gun off the checklist. If you don't have any other suggestions, we can get started on looking for the dark one now. Are you sure that the thing that you saw isn't the dark one? That's all I can think of for now. But it's been a long day. Perhaps you should rest before we go looking for a fight. Hmm. Yeah, you're probably right. And a tired, slower reaction time isn't going to help when I'm trying to kill him. Killing is an activity that you really should be fully awake and prepared for. Yep, that's what the Surgeon General says. I agree with that assessment. All right. Nowhere I can find a bed that's nowhere near one of those fleshy tumor things? A co-worker of mine kept a pillow and blankets at the teleporter hub. That'll do. You can tell me where to find them once we get there. I was going to suggest going back to the hotel, but uh, considering we left some kind of demonic entity in the basement, or rather on the ground floor, maybe that wouldn't be the best idea. However, I would like to continue exploring this facility if at all possible. Although it seems like it's just more barracks, nothing really here, and we can't seem to interact with any of these crates. Come on, don't you want to stock up on ammo? Haven't you played any FPS games? Let's go back to the hub. The blankets should be in one of the filing cabinets. Why not a filing cabinet? Oh, I am so excited to finally get answers on this. Well, we didn't really keep many physical files at this location. I guess he decided to use the vacancies. I believe it was one of these. There we go. Oh, I am so happy with myself for actually getting that on the first try. Alright, let's set this stuff up in the lounge. 
set down the equipment you've gathered and make yourself a bed. Oh uh, yeah, this is our apocalypse base. Now we're playing Project Zomboid. Project Zomboid without the zombies. <laughs> and the only thing you have to say about your new weapon is nice. The suitcase smells nice. What is it? Stop smelling things. Or if you're going to smell something, smell the coffee. There's some old dried coffee stuck to the bottom of the pot. Maybe have some water? No? Okay. Well, let's go to bed. And rest my weary head. Uh. So, tomorrow we start looking for this dark guy. <laughs> yes. What an arrogant name. <laughs> I love how you set him down right next to you. Ooh, look at me. I'm the dark guy. Uh. I must say, you've taken everything that's happened very well. Hmm, you think? Kind of felt like falling to my knees and screaming a few times. Oh dear. Is there something I can do to help? Eh, uh, Don't worry about me. I'm not gonna break on you. Just thinking about this like it's an adventure. Finding things to get annoyed at also helps. It... It certainly does. I relate so hard. I see. Thank you, Ara. Still pretty excited that the solution involves just a gun. No problem. Good night, Keskin. Good night. Any new ideas, or are we ready to get started? I think we've covered our bases pretty well. The case we brought has eight jammers. If we use them all, the Dark One's power should be substantially diminished. Even if he can muster some strength, we have an assault rifle. Conventional weapons eclipse combat magic in most situations. That's what I've always been saying. Just shoot Voldemort. Keep your distance once we find him and you should be alright. Right. Now we just start looking. Do you have any info on this guy? Appearance? Location? Well, before he wiped everyone out, he appeared to us on every device that could carry an image, audio or both, threatening us with extinction. I remember his head was a luminescent, red, jagged rock. His head's faint glow revealed his shoulders and some of his upper torso, but aside from that, I don't know anything else. His surroundings were entirely black. I could not make out a location. Hmm. Not a lot to go off of. That teleporter in the other room. Can it send us to random locations? You would be the one to consider just teleporting to random locations until you happen to find the guy you're looking for. It can, yes. Can we also set parameters on where it sends us? Like, we'll send you anywhere but the area must have lots of magic? Ah, I see what you're getting at. I think it's safe to assume the Dark One possesses vast magical capabilities. We can set the teleporter to drop us near locations with high concentrations of magical energy. That should eventually land us at the Dark One's location. And probably a whole lot of other dangerous locations before that. Alright, that's something to go off of. I suppose something is better than nothing. Do I need to grab this stuff? So, magic jammers, huh? And I guess in a magical world, security measures for such a thing would become necessary. Ostensibly? Hmm. Gun. Ye. We're not gonna take those things with us? Oh, don't forget to set breathable air and an atmosphere that can sustain organic life as parameters, too. Naturally, that's the system's default. Good to hear. Alright, explore, jump, custom. Oh, how frighteningly vague. Oh, oh my. You take a deep breath. Okay, no panic. 
Not yet. I have air. I'm not dead. I can work with this. Huh, that's the Kerbal Attitude. But we are someplace certainly not where we came from. Someplace not where either of us came from. This doesn't look like anything we've seen so far. Kind of weird how it's only once we start pressing with the scientific buttons that we get to something that looks like magic in a magical world. Uh, let's not open the hatch just yet. Let's have a look around here. Some kind of grate. Vent, sorry. Ah, but we're just like a room floating off in the middle of nowhere. It didn't allow me to pick that stuff up, but I hope we did. Ah, never mind. We're back into the mundanity again. You feel like something might burst out of the locker and run at you. Well, I didn't until you said that. No, that's just goofy. Nothing's gonna do that. I've told myself the same thing many times before. Okay, up and down. Game, stop giving me freedom. I don't like freedom. Freedom makes me feel scared. Although there are stairs here, they lead to a solid ceiling. As though the stairs were built first, then halfway up were cut off by the ceiling. This place doesn't really conform to the rules of reality, does it? Wasn't this chunk of building we're in only tall enough to have one floor? It was. And this mop has been pulled out of a bucket! Only true monsters lie here. As far as you can tell, this is an entirely solid metal box. There's no way to open it. Alright, further down. And yet another hole. Are we going to have to jump through? But it looks like some colorful books have been scattered all about, and someone has left a laptop on yonder table. Locked? <laughs> you keep doing, like, little bits of different flavor text like that, and it makes me nervous that something's going to jump out of the stinking locker. Uh, let's have a look at some of these books. Wait, that book there? Would you mind picking it up for me? Sure thing. What's the interest? Yes, yes. It says teleportation notes. Would you mind keeping it on your person? I may be able to learn something useful from it. Simply keep it on your person and I can read it. How's that work? Huh. I don't know. In fact, I'm certain this is the first time I've ever done such a thing. Neat. <laughs> I guess it is. You bring the book, Teleportation Notes, with you. Let's have a look at this laptop. Uh, it's apparently scuffed, and there's nothing we can do with it. You look through the hole, but can't see the next floor down. It's almost as if this whole place is generating in front of me as I descend. And there's yet another one of those things. These lumps of flesh... At first I thought it was like a bull squid looking thing, but now it seems like it's masses that grow around some sort of core. Ara, please don't smell this one. You were thinking about it. You were thinking about it, and you felt the judgment. You open one of the books on the table and read a little from the first page you see. See sudden movements once the grave is in your sight. Approach normally, slowly, and the wraiths will not trouble you. Do not do anything that might startle them. Well, that's ominous. You gently close the book. Okay, not the problem I'm dealing with. Maybe it is. Maybe it could be. Are you all right? I was just thinking, if this turns into a stairwell instead of full rooms, I'm turning around. Why would it do that? This is the fifth floor of a chunk of building that should barely have one floor. I wouldn't be surprised if weirder things started to happen. 
I think part of what I love about this character so much is that she's a game narrator who has gamer instinct. I suppose. Wait, why would a stairwell be bad? It's only in this moment that I can think back to the Steam page uh, saying that it's partly inspired by SCP. And we're walking. <laughs> like, I'm not explaining this whole lore to you. A single tall vase stands alone in the room. You approach it carefully. What do you want to do? Let's look inside. Hmm. Nothing happened. Touch it. You run your fingers along the surface. As far as your sense of touch is concerned, this base is absolutely, beyond the shadow of any doubt, the smoothest object you have ever touched. Huh. Well, now I kind of want to look inside again. It's like my character steps back but doesn't want to report what she saw. Alright, well, have it your way. A desk. You knock on the locker. And no response. Which is not unexpected, but certainly a relief. There's no way to open this box. Is it just a metal cube? Yeah, there's been a few rooms with these things so far. All with different, but similar descriptions. But that is noticeably open. You slide open the drawer. Just gonna... Take this. You pick up yet another curious looking plushie. Guessing you've never heard of Diogenes, being from a different planet and all. I'm not sure how to pronounce that exactly, but I do know the story. Who's that? A guy who walked around naked, defecated in the streets, and then proclaimed he was better than others. Also, one time he took a steaming dump in someone's classroom. But that's what philosophy is all about! Well, I don't know what brought this on, but he sounds like a bit of a quack. You think that's wild? Get this. Back on my planet, people thought he was deep. Huh. If you don't mind my asking, what brought up this thought? Coping. Because this place now has seven floors. Well, I'm glad someone's keeping count, because I'm certainly not. And this one is completely barren. Well, this is a change of pace. Not necessarily a positive development, but a change of pace, to be sure. In fact, it almost looks like the tentacle-looking things that envelop those yellow growths. And it looks like I can even see some such things poking through the soil. Huh. Can't help but feel I'm being lured to an extent. This is weird. It's like I can't step into the shadowed areas, although with the way these tendrils leak out, maybe those aren't shadows at all. Oh, uh, what are you... What are you? You don't know what this is. You're not helping. Maybe we'll know what this is? You seem startled by it. You shudder slightly. Okay, well, now's the part where we head back the way we came from, I guess? Surely nothing will happen on our way back. And then nothing did. Cool. But we can go down. No, I've had enough. Really? Oh, come on. Aren't you the least bit curious? Okay. Well, let's get out of here, I guess. Well, that's enough time spent at this location, I suppose. Get in there. Well, let's check another location. 
Reality Breaking Tower. Oh, that's kind of interesting. We can actually go back and re-explore with a name. Keskin, you're sure I set everything upright on the teleporter? Those growths around those crystals look like we can't go back. Yes. Environment that sustains organic life. Air. Heavy concentration of magical energy. I mean, I'm not dead, so I guess it fits those parameters. You scan the surrounding area carefully. But what's there to scan? We only want to move in one direction. We really only want to move in one direction because I don't want to lose the crystals, although... I don't know what this is. Yeah, we're not going to be able to leave, even if we want to. Is that some kind of egg? Seriously, you don't have anything to say about this? Literally the only thing out here, and you've got nothing to say about it. Don't even want to take it with you? Of course. I knew this thing was going to have something to do with it. It was behind everything. You huff dismissively at the vase. Yeah, you don't even want to look at it anymore. You just want it to know you're onto it. Okay, well, I can't seem to interact with any of this stuff, so now I truly have no idea what to do. You feel yourself being pulled away. Let it take you? It seems like the process may have been corrupted just a bit. If we can detect concentrations of magical energy, maybe this dark one can too? Maybe they're aware of our hopping adventures and are seeking to put a stop to it. Can we add a send user somewhere that doesn't make them want to cry parameter to the teleporter? Apologies. Unfortunately, we cannot. Right. Well, I'm curious to know what you actually call this thing. Simply question marks. Okay, well, let's jump. And each time hoping that the next jump will be the one home. This is the first music we've heard this entire time. Some kind of dead, ashen forest. Unless... That's not music in the actual ambient sounds of this space. Some kind of ornate stone structure. Decoration? What do you call this? Uh... It looks like a sort of lantern carved out of stone and built into the ground. I want to call it a structure, but... That word implies the thing being referred to is big. A structure, so that doesn't feel right. Couldn't we just call it a lantern? That might just be what you'd call this, but that doesn't feel right either. Lantern kind of implies you can pick it up and... You tug at the thing in the ground a couple of times. Yeah, see, it doesn't even want to budge, so lantern's no good. We could call it a decoration. Ugh. Yeah, that'll do. This is me, and the reason why my vocabulary is so limited in these videos. An ornate stone decoration. It looks like it was once meant to hold candles. Like some kind of lantern, or a structure meant to house one. Our footsteps are actually quite pronounced here. And these tall, thin trees are almost like bars that something could peer out at us from. And somehow it expanding out like this feels even more foreboding. 
It said this place has a high concentration of magical energy, but what could that mean? Hmm. There's yet another guardrail here. Is this a street? Kind of felt like we were in the middle of some kind of forsaken plane, but perhaps just an apocalyptic segment of the same empty world? Well, this can only mean good things. There's an inscription on the door. Let's just try observing first. You look closely at the door and the inscription carved into it. Okay, it's definitely moving very slightly. A small dark structure. There's a small opening in the wall containing four smooth wheels with numbers on them. You spin the wheels a few times. They move pretty fast and are fun to roll. Have I found some kind of magical fidget spinner? <laughs> that look of satisfaction, it gets me every time. Let's read the inscription. Wait, I can read this. This is... Yes, right. It says, First, those light bears who watched you approach us. Second... The ones who approach us. Third, those among you with retained natural form. Before your eyes, some of the words carved into stone begin to shift, writhe, and reform into something else. Um, fourth, we welcome you. It is seven. Alright, so let's look at that again. First, those light bearers who watch you approach. That's obviously the number of candle holders. The ones who approached us. Those among you with retained natural form, one, seven. So something, something, one, seven. All right, one, two, four, five, six, Seven. All right, so seven something, one seven. But look, let's actually think about what us means first. Those light bearers who watched you approach us. So us being the box itself or the occupants of the box? Second, the ones who approach us, so that could be us. Or rather, hang on, that could be I and Keskin. The ones among you, the ones among you with retained natural form, and seven. So it could be seven two one seven. Let's try it. Seven two one seven. Didn't work. I mean, if it's only the ones who watched us approach. Then maybe... Maybe it's actually six? You hear a faint clicking from the door. I see. The door is unlocked and can be pushed open. You do so and enter. It's pitch black inside. Just like that gas station in the beginning. Let's stare into the darkness, maybe wait for our eyes to adjust before we start feeling around. Before your better judgment can tell you to stop, you see something begin to take shape and approach from the dark. A silver ring with a red gemstone drifts towards your hands. You take it and quickly leave the room. Well, free bling, I guess. I'm not sure what it does for us, though. You hold the ring in your palm. 
there's an inscription on the inside of it. One shall be undone at the cost of one. That doesn't sound good. You know, getting sick of this cryptic talk already. Keskin, do you know what this is? Oh no. This is... It's a void ring. What's wrong? Nasty piece of work is what's wrong. The ring allows the user to dissolve all the blood from one target. But the price is the blood of the user as well. So, a guaranteed kill. Yes, but the price is not acceptable. Ara, I don't want you to... You tilt your hand 90 degrees and let the ring fall to the dirt below. Huh? You blow air out your nostrils dismissively and kick dirt over the ring. Oh. Yeah, don't even worry, Keskin. There is no tough choice here. I want to kill the Dark One, and my preference is to survive while doing it. Plus, you have a gun and some magic jammers! Uh, what? I just... I thought that was going to be so much harder to convince you. Are you making fun of gaming tropes right now? No. This ring lost me the moment I heard you say, to use it, you have to die. I have a gun, thanks. Absolutely right. We do not need things like this. Oh, before I forget... <laughs> you draw your pistol and shoot the half-buried ring, shattering it. Was that maybe not a good idea? Could that have been thought through a bit better? Better to be sure. So, I suppose this building was the source of the heavy magic concentration. No dark one here, I guess. I guess so. Well, at least the pistol finally found a use in this game. Some reason to explain why we even have it. Wait, oh no, I accidentally skipped dialogue because I was holding down the mouse. Uh, we can probably just use one of the cities. The building and infrastructure should still be perfectly fine. I'm actually going to check tape so I can read that. I don't want to move on without it. Okay, it says, when we scat out the Dark One's hideout in Axum, we're going to need to switch focuses to gathering survivors and establishing a colony. You really are still on this, huh? And then the next one was, we can probably just use one of the cities. The buildings and infrastructure should still be perfectly fine. Yeah, I mean, it seems like Elven energy sources are pretty great. I'm going to have to learn how to farm, huh? Gonna be salad and vegetable stew for a while once we run out of canned food. Beats starving to death. Do you really believe there's more people? Of course. Just gotta find them. And no sulking. We're gonna beat this. Well, if you say so. That's the thing with this character, is there's a confidence to it, but it feels like something more that needs to be there, rather than something that just is there. Because it's like she said earlier, if I sit down, I'll start to dwell on it. Let's go. Okay, another try. That was called the Dark Woods. Hopefully the third time's the charm. I'm getting used to this faster than I expected. Or maybe I'm fine with this place because it isn't dark. No. That's what they want you to think. You truly do have the gamer's instinct. Who? Whatever's gonna come at us next? Been chased by some... thing? Had to kill a ring offered to me? Who knows? Gotta stay alert. Let's have a look around Shock Zone. It stretches up as far as you can see. Or maybe the top of the tree is blending in with the whiteness of the sky. Hmm. Quite a wide, large area. Ooh. 
Ooh. Taking real advantage of the 2D perspective here. Uh, we could continue following it, but that doesn't help multiple such trees. And this one is hollowed out. Oh, it seems like these things are everywhere. There's no escaping it. How close to the Dark One would we be exactly after the teleporter drops us off? Don't think I don't notice those red spikes on the ground. Hmm. I'd put it at around a kilometer. It drops us close to the energy source while also being in an environment that can keep you alive. That parameter will also prefer to drop you farther rather than closer to the magical source. And it's mostly empty white plains around us, so... Yeah. I guess he wouldn't be here then. Uh, getting kind of tired here. We can pick this up tomorrow then. We should get some rest. Yeah. Hey, don't you get tired? Huh. It seems I do not. Well, okay, but what about this? There doesn't seem to be any of the white growths around these gems. Mmm, pretty. But you're not going to try and take it for yourself, are you? No, I guess not. They seem pretty lodged in the ground there. Well, let's head off to bed. You toss the blankets over yourself and leave all your problems in the hands of tomorrow, you. Which is still you, but you get the idea. Hey, Keskin. Hmm? What... what'd you do before all this? Transmutation engineer. Ah, oh, cool. Like, full steel scientist? That show was neat. Sorry, I don't know what that is. It's an anime. Ah, I see. Wait, you know what anime is? Yeah, that, um, interesting medium of storytelling. Well, hey, it's not... Wait, wait, I was trying to say... Keskin, we've been using the same words this whole time. We have been. Huh. That's... I don't know what to make of that. I'm sorry, I have nothing to add. I guess we should just be happy we can understand each other, huh? I think so. All right, then. Good talk. Night. Good night. You know, I actually, like... I sort of like this friendship and the way it's written. It's so casual, and yet somehow these scenes are all still landing. But I'm awaking to the sounds of... munching? Ah. Uh, guess I'm just having a snack. We could always loot some stores for chips. I really wouldn't call it looting. Looting implies I'm stealing from someone. Most people are dead, so... Right. Oh, come on, it's not looting. All I said was right, nothing more. Oh yeah, well, sure. Right. <laughs> well, back to it, yeah? Yeah. I don't know, it's, it feels more real than most games. Like, most games, and even movies and shows, they don't take the time to show us, like, these little interactions like this. But here, somehow, it's more effective than any crazy encounters that we could go through together. Let's have a jump. Hmm, some kind of lab? We're in space! Is this one of your people's ships? No, it isn't. It's so spacious and... there's gravity. Yeah. And there might be more chances to find survivors than I thought. I'm still blown away at the gravity! How did they do this? Whoever they is... Right? Well, that's enough gushing for now. Let's search the place. I can't imagine he'd be here, but 
we should still check. Hey, Keskin. Yeah? I just noticed. I can read the letters on this keyboard. Why is language like universal? I'm also able to read it. But it's not yours and it's not ours. Something really strange is going on here. I'm starting to think there might be more to this than just an apocalyptic threat. Better not touch any of these buttons. Don't want to accidentally launch this ship into a star with me in it. Yeah, says you. I just got done recording the VR special of Outer Wilds. This one looks different. Autopilot on. Systems. All fine. <laughs> that casual language. Video message corrupted. Retrieving salvageable data. Salvage complete. We're leaving. Okay, uh, references aside though, that looks like the image that was described by Keskin. How far did he reach? Is this our guy? Yes. The image is damaged, but this is him. Scout drone still searching. Candidate system selected. Additional candidate systems pending. A Suja system inhospitable. A Deeb system pending. Hadar system hospitable. Moving to solar system. There must have been some kind of threat and they were, well, I guess this threat. And they too were searching for some place to stay. And it looks like they may have found something. Take the elevator to cryo storage. Are you gonna kick these boxes too? Critical error. Status of cryo beds. Critical error. A long list of files appears on screen. Each has what looks to be someone's first and last name. Waking up cryobed engineer. Critical error. There are a lot of prompts and red flashing lights that you don't understand here. Better not mess with it. You click a white X in a red box on the top right of the window. That sounds an awful lot like messing with it, Ara! Okay. Good to know that's the universal symbol for I'm done here and I don't want to break anything. Or you just broke something. There's a viewport on the casket, but nothing's inside. Okay, well, we are going to have to check all of these, then. These three over here have nothing in them. Neither do these. Oh, uh, this feels like opening up all the lockers in Anemiopolis. You know, I'm half expecting the last one of these to contain nothing but a woman and a cat. Uh, but no such luck. Oh, but there's more. Much more. Much more indeed. Oh, look. More metal cubes that we cannot examine. So, this definitely isn't one of your world's ships. No. Not yours either? No. So I guess we can say for sure that this ship belongs to another world with intelligent life. And that they were wiped out, too. There's more of this red flesh mass as well. Yeah, don't think that's a coincidence anymore. Well, we can worry about it once we've killed our guy. Right. I'm starting to think that it's not going to be so simple. Ooh, we can come up here as well. This looks like some kind of storage room. All kinds of crates and odds and ends and drawers. Some kind of closet. Looks more like you want to call it a storage unit. But this one up here, it clearly has something up with it. The door is slightly ajar. You open it. Oh, don't keep me in suspense. You had to take what was inside. Must have been another plushie. Yeah, what's up here? What is all this stuff? 
Wait, there was another door back this way. This seems like the main progression. I want to know what was over here. Locked. But maybe... Uh, that looks like it goes out onto space, but we haven't died yet, so let's try to ram it with our noodle arms. No, no, hold up. We can work this. There you go! Ah, shoot! Ah, hit that at the worst possible angle. Oh, dear. Are you gonna be alright, Ara? Uh, yeah, 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 I'm good. Thanks. Okay, well, it looks like that wouldn't have had a good outcome if it had succeeded. I was kind of hoping it wouldn't. Now, we've got to start figuring out what the deal is with these things. Is this some kind of ship? Why does it have tentacles on it? I'll have time for that later. Tentacles, but not like the kind we've been seeing. I don't think he's here. This place is big, but not that big. We would have noticed something if he was in any of these rooms. And in space, if we're in transit, we'd have to be traveling more than one kilometer per second. Uh, okay, so I guess we leave. All this is doing is showing us just how hopeless this search is, that it really was everywhere. This room looks like a sort of hangar. Yeah, let's start pushing random buttons so I can open a hangar door and die instantly. Nope. That's the cool thing. This whole area does suggest that everyone did just vanish. None of the escape pods gone. All of the cryopods empty. They're just gone. And that stuff, those growths, they just appear everywhere. Well, let's head out. At least we're creating a nice portal network so that, well, I guess anything could come follow us back. Keskin says that's not the case, but I don't know. All right. Another office. How could I have guessed? A file. Hippo's Tooth Fix is written on the front. Under it, in red marker, is written, Please implement this fix ASAP. Don't put this off. Okay, so somewhere there's a hippo in need of dentistry. Journal. November 22nd, 2056. I think the Voidwalker teams either messed up or didn't have a chance to mess up. Woke up this morning and found everyone gone. Looked around the facility and found no one. There is someone else. Or at least there was. Made a few calls. Still no one. Going to keep trying to make contact with other facilities. Ari, you have no reaction to this? This is exactly what you've been searching for for months. November 20th, from Dr. Bradford. Oh my god, XCOM was active here. Too hidden. Strike down the Red Star. There is no cover-up for this one. I don't think we need one. It's alright if people see this as a one-off, big bad villain. It draws their attention away from other threats and liabilities. Remember, be discreet. Okay, would love to know what all that means. This filing cabinet feels a bit shorter than you're used to. You know, you get irritated by all the right things. Sounds like rain outside. And these vending machines are empty. I always end up standing in front of these longer than I should. What's over here? You look out the window. Pouring on a dark night. Nice, isn't it? The rain? You like this? Yeah, it's soothing. And strolls on a rainy night are very nice. I think I would rather wrap myself in a blanket with some hot cocoa. Mm hmm. Well, it seems like we have similar tastes. Oh, listen, the patter of the rain gets duller as we step further inside. Journal, December 8th, 2056. I've contacted every facility I could. Phones, emails. I even stuck a physical letter in the mailbox. Nothing. No response from anyone. Huh. You always like to stare at things under one of these. Anything would do. 
didn't matter what. If it fit under a microscope, you were having fun. Locked. You're not sure what a locker like this would contain. Let's try out this other computer. Come on. January 2nd, 2057. Still no one else. Rations holding up fine. At least the thing we kept here vanished too. Yay. The thing you kept here. I have a feeling I can already guess as to what it looked like. February 26th, 2057. You know, it's real wasteful of you to keep each entry on a different computer. Still hanging in there. Maybe I should start a podcast. The voice that speaks into the void, never to be heard. Could be fun. Not for you, anyway. Which I guess is all that matters. March 18th, 2057. Something is inside the containment unit. It was empty and immaculate. Now there's a reddish-brown mass in there. None of those things have actually moved yet. I've been thinking of them as creatures, but... Well, we saw a creature, and it wasn't anything like that. It wasn't there before, and I have no idea how it got in. It has this nasty sack hanging off it. Or is that translucent skin meant for something to look out through? Oh boy, there's a thought. Grabbing a flamethrower and torching it. Is there a flamethrower around here somewhere? I bet this leads to containment. There's a note on the desk. Lost my nerve. I'm not going in there. Resetting the keypad password. The new password is the day everything went wrong. Okay. November 22nd. Meaning it's been like four or five months. Okay, well, let's go one, one, two, two. The keypad sounds an affirmative beat. Oh, good lord! You ain't the dark one, but you sure look like you could be like his dog or something. It doesn't look very happy, though. Its breathing is soft and quiet. It looks like there's something on its back. Uh, hi. Oh, good lord, its eyes opened. Ara, be careful. Don't get too close. No, that's more of a pleading look. Ar... Sorry. Sorry? For what? Found you. Uh-oh. It speaks with difficulty. Its jaw doesn't seem well suited for speech. Lost ourselves. Please run. For us. You're an unwitting participant in this. I understand. The creature lets out a long sigh. Hey, I've seen other masses that look kind of like you. Do you know what they are? Hey, you there? You slowly lower your hand and position it in front of the creature's nostrils. You wait a couple minutes. You felt no breath on your hand. Ara, we should go. Yeah. I guess it's time we move on. Except what is that on its back? It's so quiet. Are these actually, like, servants of the Dark One? Or are they what becomes of the people? Uh, this raises a lot of potential bad implications. Only fitting, it seems, that this cozy, rainy environment should have a place where we're kind of brought down to earth a little bit from the yee-haw attitude that we had going in. 
you feel yourself being pulled away. Let's let it take you. But before we go on, I do want to address the fact that, once again, with really enjoying the way the characters are written in this game, I was worried that when we encountered a character besides the two that we've been with, it would be a very much, ew, you're ugly, let's shoot it. So I'm glad that she actually has, like, more depth than just what we've seen so far. Alright, I'm good for another jump or two. How about it, Keskin? Yeah, I can still press on. Let's... Keskin? The terminal over there. We can access the building's security cameras. This sounds like a direct assault is underway. Oh, here they come. They're out in the hall. You choke back a whimper. We need to get into the lounge and grab the gear and get out. No. We need to go now. Keskin, please. You think I don't want to run right now, too? Please, just trust me and keep quiet while I do this. We need that stuff, Keskin. Why is the font changed? I... I just... Be careful. You nod. There's no time to wait for your hands to stop shaking. Your lower jaw can't stop shivering. You opt to keep your mouth hung open slightly to stop your teeth from chattering and making noise. Bismillah. I don't know what that means. Alright, grab the gun. Right by the door, that's what we needed. These things. You grab the suitcase. Alright, time to go. Do we need this stuff? Alright, no. Let's just go, go, go. We got the jammers, we got the gun. Let's ditch. Got any ideas for a safe place to jump to? Uh, put in these coordinates. Should be safe. Okay. So our sleeping spot's not going to be so good anymore. Uh, this spot should be safe. It's a bunker under one of the major cities. Food and a large battery that can keep this place up for decades if needed. Bunker? Good. I can do bunkers. Let's get acclimated then. Alright, well let's have a look around. Above the door is an exit sign. You gently press your ear to the door. You hear nothing. Is that good or bad? I mean, I suppose, given what we've experienced, no news is good news. Drums containing something. A pallet of canned food? Okay, that's good. And another computer. There's a note taped to the top of the monitor. Hopefully we never have to use this stuff. Seems like that time has come. Other than that, nothing but a whole bunch of canned food. You could live down here for a long time, but... Then again, I have no idea... Oh. I just became very aware of my footsteps for a second and I thought there was someone else here. Wait. I just realized this gets a lot harder. Those things are in the teleporter building. We can't use it now. Actually, there's some good news. I've finished going over the notes from that book we found. They were notes for personal teleportation magic. No equipment required. Fascinating read, albeit in some awkward wording and speech. Anyway, if I touch an object with power, I can siphon some of it and teleport us to a location. It needs a substantial power source, though. Unfortunately, we're limited to areas I know. I don't want to accidentally warp us into a wall. That'll do for now. We can always find some explosives at that military outpost he showed me. Set some sort of trap for those things and clear them out. You... Want to go back? Of course. We'll need the teleporter's capabilities to find the Dark One. But first we search the place. Then I need to rest. 
You know, I was starting to get a little bit annoyed with these rest segments. I was like, come on, you're dragging us out a little bit. But I'm starting to see the value in them. Not only because they make it feel like more time is passing, but when you make it feel like more time is passing, and when you take those times to have those scenes I was talking about before, it really emphasizes the relationship between these two characters in a way that you wouldn't be able to otherwise, if it was full steam ahead all the time. Opening your third eye and finding the truth within your heart. You spit on the book. Oh. Sorry you had to see that, Keskin. It's all right. What was that about? Looks like some kind of radio. You're too tired to try to make it work right now. Uh, some user manuals and textbooks? <laughs> Public domain for fools. This room's very empty. Indeed it is. And it's kind of discomforting. Do you want to enter now? Uh, well, when you put it like that... Oh, wow, this place is huge. And this stuff is here as well. All right, this place is out. Let's finish looking around before we move on, though. Uh, it's hanging in ropes across the ceiling, right alongside the pipes. Uh, and here's the battery. And this is one of those batteries we have back at the teleporter hub. We can use this to get out if we need to, right? Correct. I'm able to siphon some of its energy and teleport us out of here if needed. Good. Good. Oh my! Okay, Keskin, you said there's a big battery here? Yes, down the hall. Okay, we're running. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Just keep going. Okay, I gotta switch to the uh, arrow keys. I've been trying to avoid that, but we gotta go. And that thing is back! Okay, they found me. I don't know how, but they found me. You are. Oh, there's more than one. Okay, here, here, here. Take us somewhere remote, somewhere with power or transportation. All right, hang on. Oh, geez. Those things, those chase segments are so rare that when they do come about, they're extremely panic-inducing. You slap your cheeks with both hands and take a deep breath. Ara? I'm sorry. I'm fine. Come on. There's a field research building just up ahead. Let's get you inside. Up ahead is in this way. What is this? Oh, this weird alien flora is so weird. But nobody seems to be bothered by it. Ah, uh, we could go through the edge. Here we go. This looks like something that'll be of some use to us. Check the outskirts. Please, no more monsters. Well, everything looks to be in order. What's behind those doors? The bathroom and battery room. Let's check those rooms out before we get cozy. I don't want to wake up in the middle of the night with some horrors sitting on me and draining my blood through my eyes. M most agreeable idea. Ooh, and there's a safe. And the only description for anything is just tired. Here's the battery room. But we will want to look through this stuff later. And a bathroom. No abominations. Good. And tired. It's so clean. A shower sounds really good right now. But you're too tired and afraid of something attacking you. Well, you should have used the one in the hotel before things started attacking you. That's what I'm saying. 
You take a breath like you want to say something. Tomorrow we figure this out. Yeah. Night, Keskin. Good night, Ara. Your eyelids are still closed, but you're awake. You take a deep breath. Hmm? Oh. Still dark? Nice, I can go back to sleep. <gasps> Maybe not. You're very awake now. You get dressed, maintaining eye contact with it the whole time. What happened? This place again? Wait. Keskin? You force the words out. It's hard. It feels like something might hurt you if you raise your voice. You find the strength to do so. Keskin! No one answers you. Your knees feel like they want to give out. Move. Find Keskin and get out. That's all I need to do right now. You stifle a sob. I'm fine. Focus. Not just a friend, but also our only connection to reality. It looks sad. Even sadder when its eye rolls to look at you. Another one of these things? It smells like it's rotting. Okay, we have to look around. These meat walls... Oh, and these things are everywhere. Can we examine said meat walls? Oh no. It's a whole tree! Don't think about it, just walk. Oh no, I hope it's not going to turn out to be some kind of like repeating environment. You don't like how the mass settles on the floor. A light. Okay, this looks like it goes somewhere. Let's go. You don't feel right in your skin. It fits, but it feels awful. You open your mouth to shout, but you're submerged. None of your limbs are moving like they should. God, you trip. What? I think we're confirmed these are the people. No, you're still alive. Get up. Get up and figure it out. You crawl, writhe, and drag yourself along the ground until you can get into a comfortable slither. Oh no. This again? Find Keskin. Get out. You look down at your... arms. Where did everyone go? Uh, will we even be able to operate that gun anymore? This is the thing we crawled out of. We've become one of them but still conscious, still able to have some kind of will. Even if we find Keskin, what will he think of us? What? No, I, I just left here. How's... Okay, breathe. Go. Just go. Oh, these things are getting more and more horrific. But no time to examine. Just go. These things don't attack us. Wet, bony cracks. It seems to twitch slightly. Okay, just act like you belong here. For all intents and purposes, I do belong here. 
After all, he is here and must die. Hello? Don't think about it. Don't worry about it. You're still alive. Just keep moving. Keep moving. I think we're losing ourselves mentally as well as physically. Nothing to say about that? Off into the dark, but I don't see anything here. And the silence at this point is just deafening. Somehow, knowing we don't have a companion makes the silence we were already experiencing even worse. More of you this way. Sound of clearing its throat, but it doesn't speak. I think we just have to follow you guys, yeah. A whole bunch of them. Is there more up here? Well, some other exit from the cave. The device above the door emits a single beep. Biosignature recognized. You hear something click from inside the door. Hello? Okay, something on our left and something on our right. Oh, so much healthy plant. Does that mean that whatever this place is, it's still going? That someone's maintaining this. Neither dead nor plastic, but healthy entirely. There's a memo open on the computer. November 27th, 3166. Getting the job done. This isn't exactly what you'd call a kill spell, but it will do the job just the same. No need to call it anything else. Science and engineering textbooks. And what looks to be a meal left out in the mini-fridge. Something stressful happened in your life while you were next to a fridge with a glass window once. It's not this fridge's fault, but you'd rather not be near it. One in a containment unit. You're too afraid to touch any of the unfamiliar buttons. Appears to be a storage unit for hazardous materials. We're part of a stock of research material. Anything here? There is. There's a whole bunch more, including this one is almost ape-looking. There's a memo open on the computer. Project Petunia. New materials comes with a chance at better specimens. This model should be better capable of speech while retaining its lethality. Still so much to be done. You're not curing this or killing the Dark One. You're producing these things. Then again, I'm starting to doubt the nature of this entire thing. What is this? It almost looks like a children's, like, playground type of thing but we can't go there to interact. Without seeing or hearing anything, you know there's something behind this door. Proceed? Not yet. There was something on the left. Yeah, I knew there was something here. There's some memos here. Odd material. Pulled in something that shouldn't have been alive. It rejected the process showed up on my doorstep and was talking. Kept calling out for someone, presumably a friend. Oh no. His friend is probably here too, having their material reconstituted. Anyway, I placed the talking object into some RM089. It wasn't really designed to accept this kind of material, but it will be a good test. Besides, it seems to only be one life. Not much goes to waste if results are poor. Alright. Now these high chairs and baby bunny. 
are really disturbing. There's got to be some major answers about what we've been going through behind this door. Let's see. There you are. Ah. Petunia, you're up. Come. Let's check your... And we set upon you. But you're not who we think you are, are you? He's already trying to raise his free hand to do something. Oh, jeez. You waste no time. And don't give him a chance. You're not sure, but through his screams, you think he might have been trying to say something. This can't be good. You press your back to the wall and slide down. Well, that's one thing off the checklist of things to do to save the universe. Keskin. I can't be the only one who dodged it a second time. No. No, I can't be the only one. Neither me or Keskin are anything special. Of course there's people left. Just gotta find them. Just like learning a new subject. Welcome to the post-game content room. If you wouldn't mind, please drop a save in this room. You'll need it to access this room again. Sorry if that's any trouble. Enjoy. Uh... Okay. Oh, I didn't know I could... I didn't even check this the entire time. Alright, stuff. Soup Yuki doll, the first banana. That must have been the thing that I was confused about before. Ara's threads, hunter skin. Ara's phone. Ah, oh, there's all kinds of stuff here. All right, well, let's drop the save then. Our only save of the entire game. Also, apparently we have no money. And thankfully it did save. Okay, well... Let's find out what's going on here. I am so confused. I mean, it seems like we were maybe manipulated in some way. I guess there was something that we missed, just one doll. Ooh, money. Oh, wait. It's yellow. <laughs> a laptop with a few browser tabs open. A Yautu video, which displays a thumbnail of a man with a surprised look on his face. Arrows pointing to nothing in particular, red circles, and the phrase, you won't believe. The title of the video reads, my sister takes her clothes off if I win this battle royale. Well, if it's on YouTube, I guess you lost. Man, I hate people sometimes. The user appears to play almost exclusively horror games. To live in such a way must require one to be manly and heroic. I know who you're referring to. Uh, tab 3. Smooth radio beats to study to. Ah, you found your jam. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's naming YouTube channels. These have got to be supporter content. Oh, and here, of course, we find the lushest, most alive plants of all. Credits? <laughs> Edge of Eternity podcast room? What are you? Oh, wait, wait, wait. And unused assets. Let's have a look, shall we? Ooh. The bluegrass fields with the weird flora was going to be a mining site originally. Things changed. <laughs> uh, ooh. Our ideas of starting the game in Ara's home changed. What are you? Ara and the Empty Universe was originally going to be a very different game. Oh, this is so cool to get this perspective. The first idea was to have Ara be entirely alone, and eventually have an imaginary friend. No teleporters, no Keskin, no magic. Nothing but Ara, her thoughts, an insistence that there are other people, and her imaginary straw friend. 
You're horrific. A portrait for one of the chasers. There were some noise or sound lines that they made in earlier versions of the script, but things changed. Teleportation notes. This was going to be the last image you saw in the final version of the ending. Too on the nose, though. The player can tell by the color and design of the book alone, without me having to put it dead center of the screen. So this part of the ending cutscene got scrapped. Now, scrapped cutscene part one. You might be able to tell where this is by looking. I'll give you the chance to figure it out before I tell you in the next text box. The first place you teleport to. The place where Keskin becomes a knife. Out of the building and to your left is a convenience store. Originally you had to go there and it'd trigger a chase with a hunter. Things changed. The first encounter got pushed farther off. Well, I think it was better for it. Scrapped cutscene part two. Scrapped ending cutscene part three. But he was still with you. Oh, that's ominous. Scrapped ending cutscene part two. They still had problems. And scrapped ending cutscene part one. Originally, things ended differently. A personification of the weapon we were using, maybe? Originally, Aura and the Empty Universe was going to be very different. No Keskin, no magic, no other worlds. Just Aura, her thoughts, plans for how to keep living, silence, and an insistence that there are more people somewhere. You know, that's very interesting because I kind of thought that that's what the game was going to be like, just based off of the Steam page. She also raised chickens in this version and talked to them. No magic, though. They're not talking chickens. So she'd just have one-sided conversations with her chickens. The most she'd get in the way of a response would have been the occasional... Buck buck? I mean, look. All I can really do at this stage is tinfoil hat this thing. Because I was on track until that ending. One thing that I think might be significant is the fact that Keskin was a crystal, and so is the Dark One. I have to talk about this, though. This game, in a very short amount of time, does a very good job of making you feel like you're all alone in the world, and then making you feel like you have one person in the world. And it does that through its writing, making us very quickly come to like Ara and uh, Keskin. And so, in doing so, by the time the end comes around, where we fall asleep and wake up to find them gone, and then when we read those data entries that say it's been a thousand years, that is such an unbelievable gut punch. Despite its simplicity, the art style is really appealing to look at, and so much of the story and characterization lands the way it does just because of Ara's expressions which is really nice. It wasn't at all what I expected, like a lot of reviewers said, but I got so much more out of this than I expected to. When I say it's not what I expected, I say that in the best possible way. It's got a really unique tone to it where it's got what I, I can only describe as, like, optimistic dread. It's giving you this very simplistic plot, go here, find the things, kill the guy. But the whole time, you kind of have the impression that there's no way it's going to let you through that easily. And it almost sort of seems like Ara knows it. The whole time, the way she talks to herself is so confident, but like I said, it seems like the confidence is more for her own benefit than anyone else's. Like she just has to always find something to do, because if she stops moving, she'll have to think about the fact that this is her new reality. And now she finds herself in a reality that's even worse. Oh wait, I I've completely forgotten to enter this. Ara's canon interview. Canon? As in the following events are canon, okay. I can't make it too obvious now, all right. <laughs> okay. Hello, good morning, afternoon, evening, or night. 
I'm host, and we've got special guest Ara in today. Woo! <laughs> Morning, host. Stock laser gun sound effects. Watch as Concubong expands into lingui- Okay. Okay, well, these are all words. E. Every time, huh? You love it. Yeah. Ara. You jump in your seat a little. Fearless leader, slayer of dark ones. You, how you doing? I'm all right, I guess. Still feels surreal that we're actually making it, but I'll get over that. I feel ya. <laughs> Ara. Yes, host, I'm right here. What do you think about the denizens of our little 32-strong community? Well, I like you all, of course. Ah. You know, what sticks out to me is how similar most of us look. There's slight differences here and there, but most of us have very similar anatomy. One head, one torso, two arms, two legs, two eyes, symmetrical body, same guts, same skin. Some of us got horns or maybe a tail, but largely very similar. Yeah, I know what you mean. My horns are the only thing setting me apart from some of the people here. Yet we somehow came from different planets. I think so. I've got some theories, but... Except you, of course. You're a spooky monster. I'm telling you, I didn't always look like this. I used to have anatomy exactly like yours. Scratch the horns, wow, this really is canon and taking place afterwards. Somehow that does give me some sense of closure. I can't imagine you looking like anything else. I'm gonna show you some photos once my phone finishes charging. Slippery snake leader? You're slippery. And you're gonna answer my questions, you snack! What's up with how we're all using the same words? Zell doesn't even have a mouth. Whack. I... don't know? I'm also stumped. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. Check out our next show when I learn how to shoot a gun. Woo! Bye bye Bye. The canon ending. Oh, I see. We have to examine these plaques on the wall. And this over here tells us what it actually was. Oh, we can equip different outfits. And have a look at things in more detail. Observe by pressing enter. Ara's hunter, who she is now. So, <laughs> you put on the suit? I don't know if that's making fun of me for putting on what I'm already wearing, or for putting on something that, well, can't really be described as a suit. Put on the first banana suit. Oh, we can actually try out different skins. That is so cool. Okay, I'm recording this about a week later because I've just finished editing the final video, and I feel like certain things are starting to make a little bit more sense now that I'm able to see it from that outside perspective of playing it back. I forget what model it is, but it still makes people do what you want when you wave it at them. Yeah, that is what it's for, huh? And bigger gun. Feels good to have this. Not so much when other people have them. And the broken gun. Is it... melted? I'm not quite sure when we got that one. I'm actually going to watch back the segment where we found the lab that may have been inhabited by a scientist who also survived the snap. Because I feel like there's got to be some additional context here, too, that I missed. So the red star would seem to refer to the dark one. But what do you mean by strike it down? I mean, clearly, it, it seems like this is something that elf or mankind or whatever started. Of course, we have no idea what world this actually is. It's all right if people see this as a one-off, big bad villain. But this suggests they're being dishonest as to the Dark One's actual nature. Now, something else that's been bothering me is, what is the significance of Keskin turning into a knife of all things? It's never used as a knife in-game, it just kind of becomes a different model. I realize now, I think I might have missed this computer, so I'm going to have to go back and get that. All right, this is when we come back during the... right before the chase sequence, but we haven't checked out the cameras yet. 
You run your fingers along and tap the jammers. These bother you? What? N no, no. You sure? If it's something too touchy, I'll stop prying. No, it's fine, just... Some things became easier to cope with once everyone vanished. Sorry. It's alright. You hear them on the other side of the door. What happens if we go out? Seconds before your death, you understand how fragile your body is. Looks fine. The brown gives it flavor. You'll eat it after you've rested. Wow, how hungry do you have to be? There's a couple memos open on the computer. Okay, yeah, this is definitely information that I needed. Missed a few? July 4th, 3167. A few relays have been triggered. Odd. Somehow I missed a few. I'm sure the hunters can take care of it, but one more wave wouldn't hurt. They talked about somebody who came in having rejected the process looking for their friend. We know from the end that hunters are what I became. This is called the hunter suit. Maybe wear what's meant to keep the other things, the rejects, out? As well as anyone who should happen upon this place. Project Petunia number 2. July 29th, 3167. Today. She's growing well. Jaw, teeth, cheeks, tongue, larynx, muscles. It's all forming quite smoothly. In fact, better than expected. Some of her parts I didn't plan on or design, but they're growing. Almost like the RM089 is doing what it wants. Well, it is part magic. There will be that unpredictability present sometimes. Seems to be working in the general direction I have set for it, so this is a good thing. Reading this now, now I understand. Odd material. Pulled in something that shouldn't have been alive. When it says that, it doesn't mean some horrible biological monstrosity. It rejected the process, showed up on my doorstep, and was talking. This is Keskint, kept calling out for someone... Presumably a friend. This friend is probably here, too, having their material reconstituted. I placed the talking object into some RM089. It wasn't really designed to accept this kind of material, but this will be a good test. A thousand years in between, and he didn't emerge so far apart from us. <laughs> but it, it seems to me... It seems to me that confirms all of this is literal. All of this happened. Which means, I don't feel bad about that ending. So, I do wonder if that means... Is this Keskin? So there's been more of us, but we are the first to retain this self-awareness. And now from here, we can learn to start searching the empty universe as this new being. Okay, 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 okay. I think a lot more things are making sense to me now. The only thing that's really a mystery at this point is exactly who this Dark One is and why they did what they did. It almost seems like this was more a retaliatory strike against the entire universe for somebody else screwing up and trying to take him out preemptively. Uh, there's a lot of whys left in that end, but I think we've more or less figured out the what. And so I'm, I'm really glad that I came back and got to see this context. Before I go, I just want to once again reiterate that the reason this game is so great to me is because it puts you in this premise where having another person to talk to and just having another person to talk to is worth more than life itself. And through the characterization, through the dialogue, through the artwork and the expressions, in a very simple way, it's able to derive so much value from so little. In a very short amount of time, it sort of makes you feel like you know these characters, like you're in this situation with them. 
And that's just a really great thing that even a lot of much more complicated stories don't really achieve. But if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try this game out for yourself, that link will also be in the description. And as always, I will see you in the next one.